Welcome back to another episode of Black Caution. I am Joshua Washington, and as always, I want to invite you all to participate in this real conversation that the fellas are having, all right? So with no further ado, let's get into it. Black Caution. Welcome back to Black Caution. As many of you know, we're here having an extended conversation. I asked the fellas to come and join me to have an extended conversation around various topics. And so for this episode, we actually have questions from our ladies, all right? I reached out to a few of, of some ladies I know and I asked them, I told them I got a captive audience here of black <laughs> men and you can ask them whatever you want within these, uh, I think it's like nine themes, all right? So right. the, the fellas have not heard, they have not yet heard what these questions are. So they're gonna hear it with you for the first time and I'm gonna get their response uh, and reaction to, to what they're hearing, all right? So first up, we have uh, Mrs. Delanique, who actually, shout out to you Delanique, this was an idea of hers actually. So she has a question for the fellas. Hi, I'm Delanique and my question is, what is your perspective and understanding of leadership in the home, both as a husband and a father? Is that a tough question? What's your perspective? I, I think for me, it's, it's in the Bible. I am the head, not the tail. So that's, that's what I stand on, that's what I live by. I'm the head of my household, um, I take control, and, and I make sure I put my family in the best position to win. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. You know, for, for me, it's um, definitely uh, the, the husband is the head of his household. Um, but, but I think we have to um, explain a little bit more what that means, because um, uh, what that means, at least to me, is that we're the lead servants. Right. And so what that means is all the ladies right now in the comments snapping. They're yeah, like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we're, we're the lead. Serve me, please. We're, we're, the, we're the lead servants. So okay. our, we have to model the kind of. Um, servitude, the, the, the exemplary uh, kind of character for our family. So, so what that means is uh, my, my kids should see me apologizing to my wife. They, they should see me caring for her and loving her, laying my life down for her. Um, I should be the first one to, to admit when I'm wrong. I should be the, the person who is the first one to go and, and, and serve someone who needs uh, assistance. And, and so anyway, I, I think as head of household, what that means is I'm leading um, my wife uh, through serving her, um, giving her a model to follow after, and then the same thing with my kids. I'm, I'm giving them an example of, of servitude, and, and that's the kind of leadership that I want them to kind of grow up with and to, um, to model after when they get older, so. Okay, who else? Anyone else got a response to that? I'll go after Mello, um, because serving is a big part of, 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 of leading. I remember, and I, I married no kids, uh, me and my wife going on six years, six years and for me, I had to understand that leadership role, right? Yeah. At first, you think you have to have this, you have to have authority in your home. And leading in your home doesn't mean you have to have authority. It just means that you submit to each other towards a vision and you serve that vision together. So I've learned the miscommunication I had in my first three years of marriage was how I was communicating as a leader. Yeah. You know, the, the pain that I was dealing with was I didn't have a mentor to teach me how to lead. Sure. I just had society as that mentored me and told me this is how I should lead, how you speak to your wife, how you delegate things, how you make decisions. No, I believe now the place that I'm in in my marriage as a husband, as I'm serving, thank God for having my relationship with Christ, because that led me to truly understand what it means to submit and what it means to sacrifice. That's all I'll, I'll say, like in marriage or in relationship. 
you're sacrif you got to die to each other every day. So as a husband, if you're not dying to submit to the vision of your marriage, not to, not to your wife, but of your marriage, right. then you won't properly serve your marriage to the best of your ability. So you really have to take your time out as a leader to truly understand what is servitude? Yeah. What comes with that? The capacity, the burdens. Are you graced for that? And if you're not graced for it, how do you how do you find a way yeah, to see it. the grace in it I so that you that. truly understand how to lead that. your home? I think as a black man, we have that we have that that whole stigma where, oh, a black man only makes the decision. He brings the money and the home. He does this. He does that. When we're not really taught that. As a black man, we're going into this thing together. That's right. We're working together. We're serving each other together. So for me, that's how I view leadership when okay. it comes to. Okay, you, you hit on something there. Uh, we had another question that I just thought of. So let's not go too far. Let's listen to this question. As a black man, are you willing to compromise your happiness for a successful relationship? <laughs> I knew T that was gonna get one. you. T got this one. Yeah. T got this hey, one. Yeah, I think T go ahead and lead off with this one. Yeah. Would, would you? <laughs> would I compromise my happiness for a successful relationship? In relationships, is some things you may have to compromise. Okay, so dealing with someone or being involved or married, some of you guys on this panel are. Um, it's gonna have to be some things you're gonna have to tolerate. There's going to be some things, some deal breakers, and some of those things going to be absolutely know that you're not going to do. So in a sense, you're going to have to stop hanging out with the boys because that brings you happiness to make sure your wife is taken care of or your lady is taken care of at home. You can't go out with them every, every weekend and go to the bar and watch the game. So in some aspect, you will have to get rid of that happiness of, hanging out with your friends or doing those guy things that you do do on a daily basis. Now, now did that sting a little bit <laughs> when you heard? But, you, but in some sense, you have to. Like, like he said early, he had, they had to come together to serve what, the, yeah. the whole purpose. So it's, in some aspect, he had, it was like, oh, no. I don't. He was, had some feedback or probably had some like, drawback with that. So I'm pretty sure he had, it was uncomfortable at first. Well, let me tell you Let me tell you all. Listen, I, my wife and I are reading this book right now called Sacred Marriage. And um, here's one thing I figured out real quickly. It, it, don't, it ain't about happiness. It is not about happiness. And this is why that question really is interesting to me because it almost gives the, the, the it gives into this cultural mindset that this romanticization of, of relationships, this romanticizing that we're all supposed to, you know, be together, soulmates, happy for the rest of our lives. I'm gonna bring you flowers every day yeah. and, and, and meet you at for lunch. Dang, listen, bro, I'm trying to figure out how we gonna pay this next bill and how we gonna get up out of here, bro. Yeah. And so I think happiness, T said it, bro, there are gonna be some days where you ain't happy. Like, I'm just legit not happy. There's some days, as even as a married man, where I'm like, yo, I ain't too happy right now, bro. Yeah. Like, this, this, no, is not, this is not the bliss that we, we look for on, on day one. Sure. But you still got to love anyways. So I think to that question, I would say it's, it has this an absolute yes, because you can't have a relationship without sacrifice. You can't. But then I, I, I so one thing and once again, this is just my marriage. Right. I, me and my wife have come to an understanding where, first of all, you are still a human being. OK, you are still an individual person. Yeah. What makes you happy? Right. Because you can't find happiness with me. Right. I have a happiness that I'm willing to continue to pursue. That's going to make me the best husband for you. Yeah. But everything, right? everything that makes you happy ain't good for you. I, I enjoy sure. I, listen, I enjoy going to five guys every time I go there. Well, you talk about I am happy. I am, ha I am happy when I <laughs> yeah. go there. Yeah. But, but it ain't, if I do that every yeah. day, yeah. It, it ain't good for but, me. But, but most marriage or relationship are damaged because people are looking for happiness within each other. Okay, and yeah. the thing is, yeah. in marriage, you're going to deal with those seasons where this person, this, your wife needs to pour into you and the husband needs to pour into the wife. Well, what if both of y'all empty? Y'all wake up and you both empty. Right. Sure. That place of happiness, which is your safe place, should be somewhere that replenishes you. Yeah. I mean, for me, you know, of course, prayer, fasting, reading the word uh, uh, replenishes me. But also, man, probably 
going out, hanging out with you at, at Shake Shack or or writing music. That's that place of happiness. Or going out to yeah. uh, 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 watch the game somewhere. She has to understand that that's your safe place, and you have to understand that's his safe place. Sure. So, you know, it's just defining that happiness within the, indi the individual part of who you are as a human being because God deals with us as a human being. Sure. That's you know, how and, I look at it. And I, and I think ultimately, you know, um, cause, cause for me, when I first heard the question, I, I felt like it was almost a bit for me inconsistent. Right. Okay. Cause to me, what makes me happy is a successful, like I want, like the successful relationship is what makes me happy. Right. right? Oh, okay. So, so, so for me, I do, I, I want my marriage to feel successful, um, to be successful. And so whatever is going to make me happy is whatever kind of brings me to that end. Now, happiness fluctuates. Like, like these guys are saying, it, 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 you know, Today I can feel happy and I can go outside, somebody hit my car. I'm not happy in that moment. <laughs> no, no, no. But I think joy is kind of less fleeting. That's the right? word. Yeah, and I, think, and I think joy, regardless of what's going on, um, we can still kind of have that sense of just um, uh, contentment in, in our current relationship uh, realities. But I think in our, in, from a relationship standpoint, um, yeah, compromise is going to be a, a, a real thing. Uh, but the reason why I might compromise something is because ultimately I have a greater joy in seeing my marriage or my relationships successful. So, so what was making me happy, it no longer makes me as happy if it's going to negatively impact this relationship here. So okay. you got to kind of define what's happiness for us to kind of have more clarity on that. I hope that answers that question for you. Okay. Thank you for sending that one in. I'm going to go to the next one. I even reached out to some of our black daughters to get some questions from them as well. So we have one here from uh, Jamisha who's going to uh, ask you all a question. Let's see what y'all think. Pertaining to fatherhood, I would like to know, as a black man, what affirmations have you been telling yourself to get through some of your turbulent days? Ron, I want to throw that one to you, man, because you, you actually, you, you, are, you have daughters. So what do you think about that? I think, for me, the, the, the one affirmation that, that I, I literally stand in the mirror every morning and I say to myself, I am strong. Because you, you have to be strong dealing with uh, having a daughter because she's going to go through so many different types of emotions that you have to be strong enough to deal with. I think like just the conversations I've, I've been able to have with her, it's just been mind blowing and awkward at the same sense because the, the, the sex topic has come up multiple times and it's just like, this is one of the most hardest conversations <laughs> I've ever yeah. had wow. to do or deal wow. with, bro. Yeah. Coming from somebody that you see as a innocent little girl it's it's hard so i tell myself that i am strong okay hold on hold on time out time out time out, time out, time out. so i need to know right now sex conversation what was that like we're going off the road with it. i'm sorry what was that like for y'all because i feel like sometimes that conversation is awkward for us because it was awkward growing up and we were asking those questions what was that like for y'all growing up asking those questions to your parents I ain't get a chance to. I would, <laughs> yeah, I, my yeah. mama would have slapped my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I found out through the streets. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same, the streets, the streets here. taught Same me. Here. Now I had a, I had a young mom, so we had an incident with my older brother, and you know, a little accident. It wasn't an accident. Well, they did something. And, and, <laughs> hey, listen, and the people know you. Tell did, them. <laughs> they did something, and and then a baby was you know almost was a potential chance of having. Okay. And um, she missed her, you know her cycle or whatever, and the dude, her dad came knocking on the door. And that same day, I, I promise, I was eating Apple Jacks, watching Power Rangers. <laughs> I promise, I was like 10, 11 years old. And after that conversation they had, my mom showed me how to put a condom on the bottle. What? So I had sex education in my house. Wow. Because so, I had a young mom. Yeah. So she was like, oh, no, y'all not going to be me. So she was strong enough, wow. you know what I'm saying, to be vulnerable and go ahead and no, teach us the those first steps. time I saw a condom was in middle school, and I thought it was a lollipop. I, I was like fifth or sixth grade. I right, don't I, 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 I tell you the truth, bro. But listen, I'm walking with my boy, and he, he pulls out his pocket, and I'm like, bro, why are you trying to hand me a little red lollipop? What is what is this, bro? We are we in elementary or something? Thought it was I had some no gum. clue, bro. He thought he was chewing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah I, 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 I take the candy, bro. <laughs> my dog thought it was bubble gum. Yeah, I take the candy, bro. But I, I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's that. That's that. That's that. Boy, that's where you get that from? What are you doing? <laughs> That's that new bubble this is true. That new so, bubble. So out of all five of us, only one of us had the in the house. Yeah. In the house, in the house bro. I promise I, I still remember to this day. We had that conversation all the time with my mom. 
So, so Mellow, you didn't have it. Never had it. Never had it. You come it. from a Haitian household, because they, so they was like, this doesn't I'm, exist. I'm just like Rambo. No sex. I'm just like Rambo. Don't yeah. talk about a condom. They call you a vodka bomb, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Just yeah. in your head, bro. Right. In my house, right. my, my, my mom and dad tried, bro. They really tried. And I think they bust out laughing like halfway through and was like, get out of here, bro. We, we, can't, we can't even have this wow. conversation. Wow. Yeah. So I think that that leads to, I mean, how much is that impacting our outlook on sex and relationships and family and that kind of stuff? Is well, it having an impact? Well, that messed me up. I was, it, 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 it just made me a nasty dog in the beginning. Okay, say less. Um, and I'm just keeping it, you know, I keep, like, I keep literally, it real, you know. Hey, stop, stop. You know, don't even go into you know, details. That's why he told y'all that I would probably get kicked out because I'm going to keep it real. Black caution. But no, on the real, though, it, 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 you know, it made my first, once again, my first three-year marriage was rough because I had to die to my past. Yeah. I had to let go of those things that was holding my soul, mm. you know, because now you go from multiple women to being committed to one. And now all those women I slept with, they had a piece of my soul. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back and find the pieces of my soul to put myself back together again, to commit to a woman that I needed, not just wanted, but I needed wow. because she was the best of me. Yeah. So I saw within myself, that's why now a mentorship program, I teach the young kids that do not, do not lose your soul because your future is at risk. Because that same woman that you're trying to sleep with, you don't know what demons her family generation's fighting with, what you're getting ready to intake. So it helped me to realize like, yo, what I experienced being young, it looked cool then, but it was killing me day by day. And now I'm grateful that, you know, I've been delivered through that, but you still have those struggles that linger around because of your old ways that try to sneak up on you. You know, it was, it, it was, that's what I said, it, it, it was bad for me. Wow, wow. Yeah, I didn't expect to go there, man, but oh, thank no. you for that question, Jamish. You got something? Let me write that down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take notes, take notes. I'm yeah. just saying. Uh, no, but that, that's good. Let's get, let's get, my girl Ro, she sent us a question for the fellas. I want to get this one in here, too. It's been said that the system is built to keep the black man down. So what are black men doing to uplift each other? I would say this moment. Okay, tell me more. You said real men having real conversations. You know, I, I don't think, we didn't grow up seeing this. We grew up seeing one homeboy talking to the other, then acting like he really cool with him, but being a Judas to the other brother. But here, you're talking about community. What Black Caution is doing is making us aware that we can come together, collaborate, and do something great for the other black man that is growing up today. I think it's, you you this is representing what we should be doing together, what Martin Luther King and them were doing when they was holding a uh, 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 hand to hand, walking that bridge yeah, to okay. show the community coming together. And this is how we progress in the ecosystem that we're living in today. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. definitely, oh, go I'm, ahead, I'm with that. I think um, just having, being intimate with other men and being able to, you know, express and show our vulnerabilities in certain areas in life, I think it's going to be able to opened another uh, door for the upcoming generations to follow. Um, not always being that macho man or, or you know, yeah. always, you know, being too strong, but being able to come here and have these open conversations is, is, is huge yeah. for the next people that's coming up. And I think this is going to help us get to that next level because just like you said, when I grew up, I didn't, this right here, this wasn't cool. Yeah. This yeah, was, this was yeah. a sign of weakness. Yeah, 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 yeah like, that's right. Other men talking about, you know, social issues and everything that's going on, like that's weak. No, you don't do that. But now us being here, being intimate with each other, it's, it's a totally different ball game now. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely, man. I think, um, you know, Ramsey, you made a great point about community. And, and I think exposure is a, is, a huge, is a huge thing. I mean, a lot of kids don't grow up seeing this. So we gotta really be intentional about exposing people to the reality that there are there are more to us than what you see on BET, mm. right? There, there's a whole variety of uh, a diversity of, of, of other black men that are doing different things. And, and I, I think also it requires some selflessness. I think we've got to really see each other as brothers and, and, and actually try to, to, to make those connections so we can have a greater level of intimacy and, and actually try to build and, and, and help one another versus kind of figuring out our own way and then just kind of 
staying in our own bubble, right? Yeah, every man no, for let's, himself. That's right. No, no, every man for himself in, in our space, man. We've really got to uh, try to work together. We, we all use that word intimacy twice already. So I want, I want to, I want to unpack that a little bit because I know in our culture that ain't oh, that ain't used for men to men contact. So intimacy, what does that mean? What does that look like? T, what, what you think, man? Giving a brother a hug. Like how many of you actually gave Yo. your gave some, another brother a hug and said, hey, man, you're my guy. I love you. Okay, time out, time out. Let's do a poll. First time you, that happened in your life, how old were you? I was about 24, 25. Does this include fathers? And that was outside of the church. Does this include fathers? It wasn't with my dad. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't it with my dad. How old were you first time you got embraced? Hey, man, I love you. What, what he just said, how old were you? 20. Uh, 20. 20. By, by another man? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah bro. <laughs> it gave you a hug. No, like, no I'm not saying it that way, but probably 21. See that? Uh, man, I can't even yeah. remember. So all of us, the first time we even got that, first time we even got like an embrace, man, I love you, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm support-wise, was in our yeah. 20s, bro. Yeah, yeah. In our Embr 20s. Embraced by anybody else besides your family member or dad, yeah. How many of them, the first one was from your, your, your father? Never. Never. I can't recall. Can't recall. can't recall. Yeah. Can't recall. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. That is crazy. So we can start lifting each other up just by, you know, showing some love, giving your brother a hug. Now, now I, can't, I can't see one of my, my dudes without giving him some love. The question was to say something about the system. For me, how I think today, there's no system because of the resources I have. Okay, tell me. The resources I have now with Ramsey, my Pastor Mello, I can reach out to you guys and gain that information or that knowledge to go ahead and sustain a, per a good, not a perfect lifestyle, but so a okay middle middle class lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, ain't, I ain't, okay. rich. ain't rich. <laughs> yeah. I ain't rich. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not rich, but I, I, I'm pretty sure you I do can. You do well. You yeah. do well for yourself. If I reach out to you guys, you're like, oh, give me a second. I can reach out to somebody and say, hey, you know, I can try to find this for you and get you the answer that you're looking for. Yeah. But what's the barrier, though? Why, why, why don't more of our, our black men have what, what, what you just mentioned? I, I believe it's the mentality. Okay. I believe the, the environment that they're in. And we all come from those environments, we by the way, which I don't think we mentioned this yet, but what, where y'all where boys even from? So people know, y'all ain't talking up here from the suburbs. I'm, I'm, talking, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. West Palm Beach, the gutter, the hood. <laughs> yeah, go down there. Five six one. Five six one. <laughs> and you also mellow. Yeah, South Florida as well. Moved all, all over the place because you know you got to find a. Once once that rent goes up, mom is moving to a different city. <laughs> yeah. Time you out. know, for some Time affordable out. rent. Yeah, man. Listen, yeah, and, man. and if you know us too, you know we from Amakali. So look it up. That's all you <laughs> That's need right. to know. They they were making fun of us earlier because uh, we all from from the muck. We all from you know un underdeveloped communities, which that's not anything to be proud of, but it's the truth. And so I think, I think, Thomas, you wrapped up this episode with a great point, bro. If you are someone that you're in that environment and you, you find yourself like you, like you don't have access to those resources, man, you got living proof right here. It's dudes that are from the same kind of hoods that you're from, yeah. from the same communities, and have, and have made something of themselves. Like, like T say, we don't have, you don't have to be rich to, to have a rich life. Yeah. And so I just want you to be encouraged out there. And I appreciate our ladies, man. Let's give it up for our ladies yeah. for sitting there yeah. with questions. That's some hard questions. I appreciate that. We, we might yeah. actually get into this segment a little bit later because I only got through like three questions. So that concludes this episode. Listen, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll get to the next, the rest of this conversation here on episode three. So don't miss it. Hey, listen, thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss an episode. We want you to participate in this real conversation, all right? So we'll see you next time. Black Caution.